here we are finally liquid cooling the RTX 3090, which is something that I've been so excited to do ever since it was first announced, but also a bit hesitant because this thing pulls around 350 watts on its own. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at how much radiator volume you actually need to keep this thing running cool. We'll be hooking it up with a full custom loop along with Intel's 10900K and testing with a 140mm, 240mm and 360mm radiator. And I'm personally really interested to see what the results are going to be like with a standard 240mm radiator because that's what I use in my current system back there. So it's going to be quite interesting. Let's take a look. The specific card that I'm using for this project is the PNY Accelerate Uprising model, which actually isn't on the approved list by EK for this reference block, but it is luckily using the same reference PCB. By the way, yes, I got extremely lucky that I was even able to purchase an RTX 3090 in the first place, even luckier that it managed to be a reference card. But anyway, tearing down the card, we're left with an insanely compact and dense reference PCB for the RTX 3090. It's pretty mind-blowing how they're able to pack this much power, video memory, and circuitry onto such a small footprint. Keep in mind that for the RTX 3090, you also have some memory modules on the back of the PCB as well. And this is the water block that we'll be using with it. It's EK's Vector RTX reference block, and as well, this thing is absolutely tiny. Just 220 mils in length, believe it or not, that's actually enough to get full coverage of the entire reference PCB of the RTX 3090. 3090. Now the reason that I picked up this reference block specifically is so that when I eventually install this into my own PC, which is only around 10 liters in total volume, I'll actually still have enough room to install a powerful DDC pump right next to it. That way I'll be getting both a GPU and a pump upgrade for my system. Installing the water block isn't too difficult at all. You'll find the detailed user manual on EK's website, but I find it really odd that they make you cut all of the thermal pads to the correct size. You're yourself. It's by far the most time consuming portion of the installation process. It's not fun. And for what you pay, you'd at least expect these to be cut to the correct size. Not to mention the possibility of user error here is pretty high. But what we're left with is an insanely dense piece of hardware. And that gets me really excited for all of the possibilities when it comes to installing this into your water cooled PC. Even in a mid tower build, this will give you a bit more breathing room for a pump and reservoir compared to your standard water water block, which will typically be around 50 mils longer. But now let's talk about cooling. Here's a look at the custom loop test bench, which includes Intel's 10900K, and I've configured this to run at 5.1 gigahertz at 1.30 volts. We're using F1 2020 to simulate a realistic gaming load on both the CPU and GPU to represent how they'll both heat up a loop during gaming. So let's start with the measly 140 mil radiator. And I'll be honest, I was not expecting results like this. At at 66 degrees C, we're getting thermals here that are a couple of degrees better than even Nvidia's Mammoth 3-slot Founders Edition cooler, although at a slightly faster fan speed. Don't get me wrong, it's definitely warm for a water block and you'd even expect warmer thermals when placing this inside a case, but I'd say that this is probably viable along with some GPU undervolting. Next up, the 240. Here we get an 8 degree reduction over the 140mm rad, which is a pretty massive improvement, with the 3090 now sitting under 60 degrees C. Remember, this is along with an overclocked 10900K also dumping its fair share of heat into the loop, pulling around 100 watts on its own during this benchmark. So with less CPU power, you'd see thermals likely a couple of degrees better at least. Then with a 360 mil radiator, we can get thermals topping out at just 51 C. So far, this is looking like some pretty good performance scaling when you add more radiator volume. And it makes me wonder what you could achieve with two or even three three radiators in a mid tower case, although I personally find it hard to justify that much cooling with results like this. In terms of the effective clock speed that the GPU was running at with either cooling solution, there's not a significant difference at all. It's at least worth noting that more cooling does to some degree equal slightly higher clock speeds. And here we're looking at the frequency scaling between 51 degrees C with the 360 mil rad up to 66 C with the 140. What I was really
really interested to see though were the results when undervolting the GPU, seeing as this is what I do for my own system, which is currently running a 2080 Ti, and the undervolting results with the 3090 in one of my previous videos was quite impressive. Without dropping the clock speed, we're able to drop the GPU voltage from 980 millivolts down to around 870 millivolts, which also results in around 60 watts less power draw. This means now with a 240 mil radiator, we can get temperature results that are pretty much equal to that of the 360. Overall, that's a temperature drop of six degrees compared to running the card with its stock voltage profile and definitely worth doing in my opinion. I'll leave a link to the full video on how to do this down below. So I think it's fair to say that you probably don't need as much radiator volume as you'd assume for an RTX 3080 or 3090 custom loop, especially if you're willing to undervolt the GPU. I'd confidently say that any single radiator setup with a 240mm rad or higher in a well-ventilated case would be enough to run things comfortably. As we saw, there is decent temperature scaling the more radiator volume that you add, and that's also another way that you will be able to achieve quieter operation as well. And of course, the results here would be very similar to that with an RTX 3080, but likely a few degrees lower due to the lower power. And stay tuned for the follow-up video where we will be cramming this into my own PC back there. And if you're interested in any of the parts in the meantime, I will have them linked down below in the description. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.